you who have discovered this message, this sort of bottle in the sea, have you ever truly found yourself in the dark? Not the dark of night, or even a dimly lit room, but complete darkness. The kind where no light penetrates, where there's not a single beacon in the night. Now I'm talking about total, oppressive darkness. The kind that traps you in your own fears and drowns you in the sea of dread. Something happened to me. You will most likely think I'm crazy. But I'd rather someone know, even if they don't take me seriously, than no one know at all. My name is Thomas, and I'm almost 24 years old. I'm a computer science teacher, and as you can imagine, I'm always surrounded by gadgets of all kinds. It's a bit like being surrounded by Christmas tree lights, but I like it. I'm not easily scared, and the sense that horror movies seem kind of flat to me. Too much deja vu. But I think what happened to me has changed me forever. I was coming back from work one night on my motorcycle. Riding relaxes me, and the sensation of freedom on two wheels is thrilling. I live in a remote area, you know, the kind of place in the countryside where there are more fields and houses. It must have been 11 p.m. and weather was bad. A real mass of clouds blocked the light of the moon and stars. I stopped near my house, convinced that this week had been the worst I'd ever had. It's funny how wrong we can be sometimes. I parked near the streetlight next to my house and started looking for my keys. I have an issue. I'm absent-minded and always lose everything. I must have left my keys in my bag. I used the artificial yellowish light to find the key that would grant me well-deserved rest in my den. And as I rummaged, cursing my negligence, the light flickered slightly. Strange. Even though I lived in a remote area, the installations were recent and the outages were rare. But you're never safe from a little glitch. Another flicker of the light pulled me out of my river. And I hoped there wouldn't be a power cut. I'd left a good Final Fantasy downloading since this morning. I'd be annoyed if I had to start over. I finally found my key, put my bag on my shoulder, and the helmet in hand headed for the door when suddenly the light went out for good. Power outage. Mm, great. I looked for my phone to have a reliable light source, but no sign of it. I must have left it in the staff room again. I cursed myself in my goldfish brain. I would have to grope in the dark. And damn it, my download. I cursed again until I realized something. It was damn cold. You know that sensation when you pass by a fridge in the supermarket? It was the same, but this cold enveloped me like I'd entered the fridge entirely. I suddenly felt really stupid. I always daydream. I'm going to be senile one of these days. But deep inside me, the feeling started to grow an impression of being watched. To shake this off, I imagined a little guy with night vision goggles watching me. It made me chuckle, but only briefly, because it seemed I was in another place. The sound I made wasn't natural. The atmosphere seemed to absorb the sound I produced, leaving me curious and perplexed with one question in mind. What is going on here? I was worried. Not scared or anxious, just worried. I wondered how, although I always felt grounded, I could feel such worry. I just stood there for a good five minutes. Then I told myself out loud that it might be time to stop dithering for nothing and then set off, slowly, gropingly, towards my door, key in hand. It's crazy how vision seems to be the basis of everything even other sensations. I say this because the sidewalk seemed more damaged and less smooth as I walked. 
even though I knew it was my sidewalk. As I continued to move through this atmosphere, I tried to estimate if I was still far from the small staircase leading to my home. Two more good strides. One more. And I felt like I stumbled over something. I tried to climb the first step, but my foot only met empty space. Then, the object I'd stumbled over. Probably a big rock, but still, weird. I resumed my path, always slowly, but something quickly seemed incongruous. I had walked way too far. It was impossible that I hadn't encountered anything in that distance. The sensation of walking on uneven ground was still there, but with all the distance I'd covered, I should have easily reached the end of the entrance hall. Then I did the first thing that, in hindsight, allowed me to start considering that there was a real problem. I bent down, placed my helmet next to me, groped on the ground on all fours to see if I was still actually on the sidewalk, but I didn't encounter that sensation. The ground I'd been crawling on for some time seemed pretty rugged, though relatively flat. It wasn't tiles, it felt more like I was moving on volcanic rock. Continuing my exploration, and hoping a dog hadn't done its business where I was putting my hands, I picked up a rock from the ground. It felt very light, with edges sharp enough to slightly cut my finger. My worry suddenly turned into a soft, diffused fear, gripping my guts and spreading throughout my body without being excessive. What the hell is this? Where am I? I thought I'd hear my own voice, but besides the impression that the sound I produced stopped a bit quicker than usual, I heard a scratching in the distance, like a brief but certain fingernail scrape on a chalkboard. This wasn't normal. I knew I was alone. No way anyone else was there. The nearest neighbors were a good 500 meters from my place. So I did what my instincts told me to do and called out. Is someone there? No response. I picked up my helmet and stood up. Maybe too abruptly because a clinking noise informed me of bad news. I dropped my damn keys. I abandoned them before even starting to search. In such darkness it was impossible to find anything, especially in this place. I started walking so I wouldn't freeze on the spot towards my neighbor's house. I moved slowly and then the new scratching sound closer and was heard. Fear gripped my stomach but I held on. No question of panicking, on the contrary, if I stayed calm or at least didn't freak out the source of this damn scratching wouldn't find me. Upon reaching this conclusion, I finally realized I'd gotten myself into a mess that was beginning to take a toll on my mental health, and this darkness didn't help me keep a clear head at all. I started walking again, a bit faster, without even realizing it. I need light. I don't know where I am, and especially with who. This information resonated in my head like an obsession. My slightly faster pace was echoed by the acceleration of the scratching sounds, an undeniable sign that I was being followed. I felt trapped. The darkness seemed to act like a vice, and the scratching noise probably heralded a hammer blow trying to strike me, but I had to move forward, above all, and cautiously. If I tripped, who knew what horrors would descend upon me? Fear had overtaken my anxiety despite my attempts to reassure myself. I still held my helmet at arm's length as if it were a talisman connecting me to my world. And I was lost. I couldn't tell how long I'd been moving through this complete darkness, followed by invisible assailants waiting like vultures for me to collapse. The prospect of my life ending like this cut the last thread that kept me tethered to reason. I ended up literally running to my doom. This sudden change of pace seemed to surprise the things following me, because one of them let out a howl no earthly creature could ever produce 
and the scratching noise is accelerated. I was a good athlete, but this oppressive atmosphere seemed to slow my movements. I got out of breath and begun to slow down. Ugh, you're stupid. Now you're even more screwed since you know you're tired. Barely had I finished this thought when I felt a movement initiated by one of the creatures. The mass with a stench like a thousand open charnel pits made me fall. I was done for, finished, and over. I felt a pressure followed by intense pain in my leg. I screamed. It was biting me, and the other scratching noises were getting closer. Trying to fight back, I found my helmet that had landed next to me. I grabbed it and swung it above my leg in a desperate effort to free myself from the thing. My attempt seemed successful as it was followed by a dull thud and the creature collapsed. I then noticed the first source of light since the power outage. The injured creature had left a glowing trail on my battered helmet as if its blood was bioluminescent. Likewise, a puddle of the substance was spreading on the ground. For the first time, I faintly saw my surroundings. The ground seemed black, like volcanic rock, and I saw a swift and agile as a feline in one of my pursuers, and I was struck with horror. It was big as a wolf, but its skin was slimy and holed in places, revealing dark, sick organs in their maw. My god, it was like a cross between a dog and a human, and a human face with a snout. The luminescence of this blood triggered a reaction that made these monstrosities flee, howling as if struck by white-hot metal. The world around me seemed, from what little I could see, to tremble visually, and two images superimposed, like I was emerging from this hell to return to my world. I eventually felt grass under my feet, and my back on a sidewalk slab, and as if I was laid across it. The streetlights reappeared as well, and that was the last thing I remembered for losing consciousness. I woke in a hospital room, my brother looking at me with a worried expression. Well, were you fighting dogs while drunk? Eh, only dog I'd fight is you, idiot. Seriously, look at your leg. It must have been a big damn dog. I wanted to tell him everything, but my good sense stopped me. He would never believe me. He explained that my neighbors had found me 200 meters past their house, my leg bleeding and my motorcycle helmet battered and coated in a strange substance next to me. I pretended to remember nothing, but the vision of that disgusting creature never left me. After staying two days under observation, I was able to go home. The fear never left me, because now one sensation always followed me, even when I was at home. It always seemed like I could faintly hear scratching in the shadowed areas, as if the sound was dampened by a barrier between its source and me. Since then, I never do anything without light. I have a necklace with a small light hidden inside of it and always a flashlight at hand because they're waiting for complete darkness to fall upon me because they're waiting for me.